A pleasant day to everyone. So for today's lesson, we're going to discuss about vector and scalar quantities. And before we formally begin our discussion, let's have first our learning targets for this morning. First is, we need to differentiate scalar from a vector quantities. Next, solve problems involving vector quantities. At this point, you will see some road signs, and road signs are very much important because number one, it serves as our guide, number two, it prevents us to commit accidents and some violations on the street. As you can see, this is a GPS or the Global Positioning Systems, which provides satellite tracking services which are very useful in a variety of commercial and personal application, especially when we are giving direction. So these GPS are very much useful nowadays. So when we are talking about physical quantities, we are dealing here about the characteristics of a body that can be measured. Commonly, it can be classified into two, just like what we have discussed in the second lesson. So we have the fundamental physical quantities and the derived physical quantities. An example of these are the following, like length, mass, time, temperature, density, volume, distance, and displacement. Talking about physical quantities, we can divide it into two. So we have the unit and also the direction. Under the unit, we have the fundamental and the derived quantities. And while for direction, we have the scalar and the vector quantities. Let's concentrate with the physical quantities based on directional magnitude. So we have the scalar quantity and we also have a vector quantity. In symbol, for you to differentiate the two, always remember if that is a vector quantities, you can see there an arrow on top of a symbol or a letter. So what is a scalar quantity then? When we are talking about scalar quantity, this is actually the magnitude of a certain measurement. Next is, when we are talking about vector, this is actually the magnitude with the direction involved. So let's try to define what is a magnitude. When we are talking about magnitude, this is the actual measurement of a body composed of a number and a unit of measure. Example is 10 centimeters for length, 5 kilograms for the mass, 30 seconds for time, 1 gram per cc for density, 15 ml for volume, and 60 kilometers per hour for speed. And for the direction, commonly we identify direction using a compass as a device. A direction shows or shows the specific location of a certain body. Example, we have north, up, down, southeast, left, and right. Here are some of the scalar and vector quantities based from the fundamental and derived quantities. For scalar, we have mass, distance, speed, time, work, and energy. While for vector quantities, we have weight, displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, and momentum. In representing a vector quantities, there are factors that we need to consider. So the first one is symbol. Commonly, we symbolize a vector through the use of an arrow. The arrow is placed on top of a letter or symbol and drawn in a vector diagram. Here are the parts of the arrow. First is the tip or the arrowhead which shows the direction. Next is the length of arrow which represents the magnitude and the tail which is the origin or the starting point. Aside from this, we need to do the scaling because there are some large magnitude that we must put into smaller ones so that it can fit into a certain materials that we are using. So scaling is used to represent large magnitude to smaller unit. Example is 1 cm which represents 10 meters and 1 inch represents 5 feet. Third, we have direction. Direction shown in reference coordinates on a Cartesian plane. Ways of writing direction is through the use of compass direction. 
And as we all know, we write or we read the direction here based on the Cartesian plane in a clockwise form. So from north, east, south, west, going back to north. So if that is north going to east, that is 90 degrees. North going to south, that is 180 degrees. North going to west is 270 degrees. And going back to the starting position, that is 360 degrees. So that is the equivalent angle of a particular direction that we have, which is very essential in our bearing discussion. So let's have or put it into a sample here based on the diagram. So the first one, we have 30 degrees. If you will notice, 30 degrees starts from the north and pointing, the, on the, the arrowhead is pointing going to the east. So therefore, we can say that it is 30 degrees east of north or north 30 east. Next is 55 degrees south of east or east 55 south. Next one is 40 degrees. So if you will notice, the point of the arrowhead is going to west. So therefore, it is 40 degrees west of south or south 40 degrees or 40 west. And lastly, we have 60 degrees. So can you guess what is the direction for this? Okay, you're right. So it is 60 degrees north of west or west 60 north. So that is how you use the compass direction in a particular given angles. Let's discuss about the bearing. When we are talking about bearing, this is the angle measured clockwise from the north. So I have here four diagrams and let's identify the actual and complementary direction based on the value of the bearing angle. So for the first example or diagram that you can see in your slide, we have 35 degrees. So for us to get the actual direction, we just copy the bearing angle since it's not yet more than 90 degrees. So therefore, since the arrowhead is pointing going to the east part and it is located at the first quadrant, therefore the directions that involve here will be north and east. So since the arrowhead is pointing towards the east, therefore we have 35 degrees east of north for our direction. And for our complementary angle, we have to subtract 90 with 35 degrees. So 90 minus 35 degrees, we have 55 degrees north of east. Notice at this part, the direction of the actual direction is just the flip that we are going to use for the complementary direction. How about if it is more than 90 degrees? So if the bearing is more than 90 degrees, all we have to do to get the actual direction is to subtract it with 90. So 145 minus 90, we have 55 degrees. And as we all know, since the arrowhead and it is located at the fourth quadrant or in, the directions in bulb are south and east, and the arrowhead is pointing towards south, so it will be 55 degrees south of east for our actual direction. And for our complementary direction, we just simply subtract 55 from 90 degrees, so therefore we have 35 degrees is of south. Next, we have 215 degrees. So since we all know that 215 degrees is more than 90, and at the same time, it's already exceeded the angle measurement from the south, which is 180 degrees. So therefore, we are going to subtract 215 with 180 degrees for us to determine the actual direction. So 215 minus 8, 180 degrees, we have 35 degrees west of south. Since as we can notice on the third diagram, it is on the quadrant number 3, where in the direction involved is west and south. And since the arrowhead is pointing going to the west, therefore it is west of south for the direction, for the actual direction. Well, for the complementary, still the same process. We just subtract the value, the actual direction value to 90 degrees. So we have 55 degrees south of west. And for the last, since it's more than 270, degree, 270 degrees and not yet exceeding 360 degrees, all we have to do is to subtract 310 by 270 degrees. So 310 minus 
270 degrees, we have 40 degrees, and the direction, since it is pointing towards the north, the arrowhead, so therefore, it will be 40 degrees north of west. And for the complementary direction, we just subtract 40 with 90, so we have 50 degrees west of north.